kit bashing, remixing, or my own very unimaginative name of idea smashing. These are all the concepts behind getting two different STLs that have two different features and merging them together to create a new STL that have both the features that you're looking for in one. That's exactly what we're going to cover here today. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is sponsored by Thangs. Kit bashing, remixing, idea smashing, whatever you want to call it, that's what we're going to cover in this video. What I wanted to do was get an STL of my quick release plate to be able to go ahead and put my phone onto it. But not only that, I wanted to use an existing STL out there that let me go ahead and reorientate my phone. However, that existing STL did not have a spring loaded system. So let's go ahead and put that into it. And that's the whole idea behind idea smashing. At the end, we're gonna have something that looks basically like this, which is that system with the quick release plate that is spring loaded that will go ahead and let me put my phone into it like so. And then if I want it in a different orientation, well, I can use the other feature of the other STL to go ahead and do exactly that. Starting from a fresh blender file, let's go ahead and do some precision kit bashing. Now I've already gone ahead and found the files that I want to kit bash together. I went ahead and used Thangs, today's sponsor, as well as Thingiverse. And basically I just like using Thangs because it goes ahead and searches them all at once for me. So that's perfect. So I'm going to select everything, delete it. I'm going to import those files that I downloaded right now. So with these files now imported, all I'm really wanting to do is sort of stick this to that because these are two precision models that have already been created for us. And let's go ahead and let's take advantage of that. So I'm just going to go ahead, rotate this on the Y by 90 degrees. I'm going to grab this, go G, X, and pull that all the way to around about there seems good to me. Yeah, that looks good to me. Somewhere like that. But let's be honest here this isn't exactly the most 3d printable thing right this minute so let's go ahead and make this a little bit more 3d print friendly so going into edit mode i'm going to separate these by loose parts so we can now go ahead and set the origin point to the geometry and the same for this one origin point over the to the geometry i'm going to go ahead and select this one making this one the active one so that i can go and use the align tool and align this both on the Y and on the X, I think. Oh, no, not on the X, excuse me, not the X. Um, let's just go ahead, let's just do that on the Y. I don't need to do it on the X because I'm gonna go ahead and do this a different way for the X. So for the X itself, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our normal snapping, so vertex snapping, Go here, go G, Z, bring this up, and then we'll just snap to a vertex around about here. So once again, G, oops, G, Z, bring that to here-ish. There we go. So that is as close as you're really going to get. It might not be the perfect closeness, but it'll be good enough for now. So now let's go ahead and deal with this hole here. Now, one of the easiest ways of dealing with a hole like this is just go right up to it. Then we're going to do circle selection, select everything in here. And then we're just going to go and do a scale, set that to zero. Then go merge by distance. And that pretty much removes the hole. But have you seen that's gone ahead and done one little problem there? What I meant to do was do a scale and make sure that when you're doing the scaling that you take off the axis that you don't want. The axis that I don't want is the x-axis. So with a shift x, it's now just going to scale the hole. I set that now to zero. Now when I do merge, you will see that that sorted that out. Just double check though, because inside there's going to be an edge. So you've got to go ahead and delete that edge. We do not want that edge in there. Right, so with that sorted out, let's go ahead and cut this bottom bit off. So I'm just going to go create a cube, scale this cube up because it doesn't need to be absolute precise. This is the whole beauty of kit bashing. So let's just go somewhere around about there. Just bring that down now as well. Bloom, somewhere there. 
and we're just going to cut that end off. Fantastic. With that end now cut off, let's just see if this is going to ball together nicely. So select, select, shift, control, ball, the plus there. Let's see that in edit mode. All right, it turned out pretty okay. Not perfect though. So you know what? I'm just going to, for my own sake, I just like having this a little bit cleaner. So I'm just going to go G, Z, 0 0.001 and go in the other direction. And let's see if that's going to give me anything better. And lo and behold, I went the wrong direction. So I've got to make sure that I go the right direction. Right, so G, Z, 0 0.001. And then when I pull this together, you will see that is a super clean pool, but there will be right here, just a heads up, like right, 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 right here. There is this sort of like weird cuts going on, but there's not really much problem with that. Cause all we're going to do now is select everything, go merge by distance, go X, do a limited dissolve. Oops. X limited dissolve make sure that this is set to only 0 0.1 so we don't need to go absolutely overboard with it and you'll be able to see that that pretty damn good enough like there is not much more of a problem here like this is totally fine now if you really wanted to remember that this is 0 0.001 of a millimeter so there's no way on earth that that is going to go ahead and screw us over later on but if you want you can go ahead and make that be absolutely perfect precision for you but i'm kit bashing here so i just want to get things done so i'm going to go ahead and move this out a little bit this way um so let's go top view g bring that to there and I'm pretty sure this one's going to be fine. Let's do a quick 3D print check. Yeah, that is a super duper clean mesh. Now, I know this mesh here is not clean at all, but that's just how other people have modeled it within a CAD program. I'm not going to go ahead and sort this out because that's going to be quite a hell of a process. But if you want me to, just let me know down in the comments and I will show you exactly how to sort this model out here. Anyway, for now, all we have to do is make sure that these are both perfectly flat on each other's planes here. So let's go ahead and I want to show you a different way of doing this. So we're just going to move the 3D cursor over to a vertex down here and we're going to set the origin point to the 3D cursor. We'll do the same with this one over here. So this is a nice flat point. Move the 3D cursor to there. And we're going to go ahead and set the origin point to the 3D cursor. The reason why I'm doing this is if we select both of these, then we can go ahead back to our view, is it? Our item, here it is. And we can align these on the Z. And that's the perfect way of doing that as well. So with that done, let's go ahead, select both of these, export them out as an STL and check them out over in the Prusa Slicer. Now, just before we jump to the slicer, let's talk about today's sponsor, Thangs, for just a moment. I'm sure you've heard of them, but just in case you haven't, Thangs is the fastest growing 3D website with over 2.5 million models to search, store, and collaborate on. One of their many interesting features is the many ways of searching for models that you're looking for using their unique geometry search function where you literally drag and drop to find similar models, or using their hybrid search which not only searches Thangs but lots of other 3D modeling websites all in one go. So when you're looking for your next 3D model to print or design with, make sure you don't forget about Thangs.com. Thank you, Thangs, for sponsoring today's video. And here we are now in Prusa Slicer. As you can see, everything's turned out pretty much perfect. So let's go ahead, let's get this sliced up and let's see what's going on. Well, it's all going on perfectly. And you can see we've got a couple of overhangs where I'm pretty sure my printer can just about handle that there. As you can see also that little bit here, because that was only 0.001 of an offset, it basically says that that is flat. Let's go ahead, let's get this printed out and let's go over to the idea smashing section of this video. So idea smashing. Idea smashing is my very unoriginal name here, which is basically merging ideas. I love the idea of this clip system here, but I'm not a big fan of this whole idea of having to use a thread. 
but I am absolutely loving this rubber band system. It seems so simple and easy to use. So I'm gonna go ahead, download both of these and bring them into Blender. So here we go, we've got them in Blender. So what I basically go ahead and do is I just look at how it's put together. I really observe the mechanics that they've used here, making sure you can see that what they've tried their best is to keep 45 degree angles, have no overhangs that are over the top, this one's straight away already in there, but this one, as you can see, doesn't have that. Now, this is one I've actually already edited. So I'll go ahead and play the video right now of me editing this. As you can see, what I pretty much do is I just take a look at what's going on, and then I just go right in and dive underneath the part. And right here, I'll come back into here so I can show you. All I've done is basically created the same system, just a little bit smaller, down over here and interpreted it over into this model. So with that done, let's go ahead, let's plop this into the 3D printer and see how that comes out. As you can see, it is slicing up absolutely perfectly. So this here is the new version that has that little hook down underneath it so that it can have that rubber band section. So let's go ahead, print this out, and then we'll put it together. And there you have it. I'm sure you can see just how powerful that is. Remember, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time when you're doing your precision modeling. Take a look online, really do some searching because you know how to do mesh editing really well, especially with Blender. That's what Blender is all about, mesh editing. So grab some STLs that you really wish they were combined together, combine them together and create your own STL remix them, combine, that is the power of the community of our 3D printer. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and it's what makes these videos truly possible. You are the driving force behind Maker Tales. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.